What up dudes, this is John back here in the Crude Oil Garage. Today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna change out the cowbells on the 2016 Street Glide. I finally got it back in the garage after blowing up the engine about five months ago. Super fast now with the Woods 408 cams in it, but I'm not worried about that right now. We're just gonna change out those cowbells. So that's coming up right now. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get the uh, the ultimate cycle lift thrown on underneath here. This thing's my favorite. Couldn't go wrong with this. Got rid of one of those old tabletop style lifts, and this thing's badass. Make sure it's straight. I'll lock them wheels. You know, I might change out the brake pedal on here, too. But, nah, let's just make that another video. Alright, check out these shiny guys. These are what we're going to put on there. These are going to look way better than those stock pieces of junk that are on there. Going to be badass. Heck yeah, we're going to get right to it. So these aren't very hard to do. It's just kind of tedious. There's quite a bit of parts that you gotta pull off. So I should probably get the uh, key because my thing is flashing in. Hold on. Okay, that's, that's better. Um, yeah, so pretty simple process, especially if you have the right tools. We're just gonna go through the steps. Gotta take off the front wheel, calipers, fender, fork legs, and then the cowbells come off. And then we just reverse the process after that. So here we go. Got to get the right tools. Need the big 15th, 16th socket on that side. Now, when I do all these, now when I do these front wheels like this, I always like to take the parts off and leave them in the area of the bike so you don't get anything mixed up. Again, there's not a whole lot to take off but we're gonna start with the fender and then the calipers, the wheel, fork legs. Bada bing, we're done. All right, so here I'm just loosening these set screws on these axle caps. So some bikes, they don't have them on there, so not a big deal. I always like to organize my tools right next to the part that I took them off so it's easy to find the stuff, so. All right, let's take off that fender next. All right, quarter inch hex head for the fender. Bada bing, goes right in there. Quarter inch hex head socket with my uh, power ratchet. Now you're probably gonna wanna have a good, nice so uh, soft spot to put, to put your uh, parts. So I'm gonna put some right back over there on a moving, actually on my table right over here on my moving blanket and we'll be good to go. No, I'm going to put them right here, right behind me. Make it easy. Now, sometimes on new bikes, taking these fenders off, they make a lot of noise. It's pretty disturbing, but this one's been off quite a few times, but just be aware of that. If it sounds like you're breaking something, you're not. You're just getting through all the Loctite and thread locker and all that kind of garbage that's on there. So don't worry about it too much. Um, this one, you're not gonna hear that sound because like I said, I've already taken them off quite a few times. You gotta have a pair of these going because there's zip ties on the other side with your uh, ABS brake lines. Don't cut your brake lines like a dumbass. Just cut the zip ties holding it together. Got it? This side. Pull that guy out. Check 
Got your two fender bolts down there. Ease this guy on out. Nice and simple. Now you gotta take off these calipers. What I like to do is, I've seen it done a bunch of different ways. Um, you can either put it in like uh, little bags of some sort or whatever. Whatever you do, you don't wanna put any tension on these hydraulic lines just cause they'll wear out faster. Um, could possibly break and leak fluid and then you got no stopping power. You know the drill. So I just do it with zip ties. I do a loose one around the, the bar here. And then uh, all right, I like to uh, once I get them off, recompress the caliper pistons to push them back in. It'd be easier to get them back on once we uh, get to that point. There you go, calipers off. Now's a good time to actually inspect your brake pads. These ones were replaced not too long ago. Clean it up if you want. These are pretty filthy. Um, <clears throat> it'll probably go back on that, uh, um, it'll probably go back on that rotor pretty easily here in, here in a second, but I'm still gonna take the screwdriver and wedge them in there just to help it go back on. Sometimes you gotta loosen your cap. Mine I don't. But uh, yep, now, now's the time to uh, redo your brake pads if you need to. And these are pretty simple. I can make another video on it later. But it's really just pulling off the screen. There's a little clip in there. You pull out that, that out. And then this uh, bolt right here, that comes out. And then these just basically pop out. So just keep an eye on that. So here's what I like to do. Make it simple. Stick a zip tie right on through there and right up through this guy and you got your little hanger right there nice and simple you see that ready to go right there same deal on the other side that's your your pinch bolt that holds your um, main front axle solid and after you get that nut on the other side loose then you want to take that out got it so we're going to swing around to the other side. Cool, now we're on the clutch side of the bike. The bike's off the ground just a tad bit. Big 15 to 16 socket. Yep, that's all it is. Just right on there. I'm gonna take that guy off. These come off pretty easy. I've done this a ton of times, so I'm not really gonna tell you the torque specs on it, but you can look them up if you're really worried about it. That's easy enough right there. We want one of these mallets. Don't use a regular hammer because if you slip, you're gonna bang up your nice crumb or your black powder coating or whatever. Don't bother trying to bang it, <laughs> bang it, pound it, whatever, until that pinch bolt on this side is pulled out, the one I just showed you. All right, we're over here on the left side. I just already took off the uh, axle bolt. Now we're taking off the Caliper on this side, if you got ABS, you'll see the ABS line. Sometimes you got zip ties on them up in your way. This one's not gonna be that bad. So let's go back with a little, little Jimmy rig right here. Coming loose, yep, pull that bolt out. Just loosely on there so you're not putting any pressure on the uh, hydraulic line. Cool, so the next thing we take off the, the nut here which came off. Show you that just a second ago. Now we're gonna loosen the pinch bolt on the brake side uh, fork leg. All right, pinch bolt, brake side fork leg right here. This one goes on a little bit tighter. All right, back in business, new battery. Perfect. So don't mix up this pinch bolt with your uh, fender bolts because I mean they look the same. No, they don't. They're a little bit. Fender bolts are a little bit longer, but don't mix them up. And there's only one of these, so you can only put it back in one spot. So now the 
wheel is ready to have that axle come out of it. So take your BFH. Y'all should probably know what that stands for. Make sure it's rubber. Y'all should know what rubbers are for too. So give it a couple tap taps. See it popping out there. Kind of grab a hold of the wheel and just. So there's a space, this wheel spacer in here. It's got the, uh, the grooves kind of in it. Those, those get, when this gets put back on, it gets put to the outside. So just kind of lift that up. You're going to have it. Oh, that one didn't drop out. Usually they do. Okay, right there. And that's your ABS sensor. That kind of drops out the other side too. So basically a, a spacer and a sensor and there's the clip that fell off also. Put that by there. And then just kind of wheel the wheel out of the way. If you get mixed up, which side is which, just look at your tire and see which way the tire rotates and then you can know which way to put your wheel back on in case you don't, don't mark it or whatever. Um, sometimes I'll put a little piece of tape on there uh, just to mark the ABS bearing side. All right, so now to the fun part where we pull these fork legs out. There's a few different ways to do it. You can either rip to shreds your fairing, whether it's a street, gl street glide, road, cut, road glide, or the nacelle on a road king. You could rip all that stuff apart and out of your way just so you can get to the pinch bolt. But I'm gonna show you a little trick right now. All right, this is the easy way, is get yourself one of these little tiny, low pro, get yourself one of these little tiny, low profile ratchets with your hex bit. And they just go boom, bam in there. I think the set, they came with three of them, different angled heads. You get them on Amazon, I think they're like 12 bucks. I'll see if I could hunt down the link and I'll drop it in the description. So here's the easy way to do it. You get up underneath that side, each side there's two pinch bolts down under here and two on the other side. That's the easy way I'll show you right now. I'm going to lift the bike up though. Okay, so there's two pinch bolts right here, down kind of by your brake line. Those two got to get loosened. And then there's one up underneath this cover here. I always just fill it with my fingers. Make note of also where the top of your fork tubes comes because you want to put it back in the same spot and you want to put it back in the same spot on both sides. Otherwise, you're going to get some weird sus suspension problems and, and uh, <clears throat> stability issues. So yeah, you want to get them just the same. So this process is really the same if you want to pull your fork, fork tubes out and rebuild them. If you've got fork seals that are um, leaking or just need replaced, or if you want to replace your lower uh, fork, fork legs. So these originally had the stock ugly brushed aluminum, whatever they were on there. If you want to put black, these got chrome on there. So just kind of make note of how far above that it is. I mean, this one's probably an eighth of an inch by feeling by my fingers. So we're gonna get the little tool in there. And when you put them back on, there's a sequence to putting them back on. Um, you gotta keep going kind of in a, a rounder motion to make sure that they're all going on evenly and then you want to tighten and retighten because once you tighten one another one's going to loosen up you don't need to take these all the way out either they just need to be loosened so don't take them all the way out and they don't need to be over torqued either and when you do the top one keep an eye or keep a hand or get a buddy or a kid or something to hold these these fork legs when they come out they're kind of heavy and they'll come shooting out on you Okay, see how easy that was? Nice and loosened up, and it slides right out. And then just give it a little, little wiggle, boom, bam. There it is right there, that's, that's one. Okay, dudes, I'm back. I had to go to the hardware store today. I mean, I started that bike yesterday. Had to go and get some new little bolts or 
screws or whatever you call these things, bolts, I guess, to make them fit on those new uh, cowbells, slider covers, whatever you want to call them. So hopefully it works. They should because I took them with me and tested them out. Little tiny uh, hex head on here. So, um, yep. So just make sure whichever hex bolts you get, or not hex bolts, cowbells that you get that they fit, the bolts fit through your triple trees because sometimes you'll buy them and the bolts won't fit. They'll fit anything that's in the back. So you just got to make sure you got ones that will fit your bike with the right bolts. The one bolts that they sent were way the heck too short. So I had to go get some long ones. These will work. So I'm going to get back to it and show you what's going on. Okay, here we go. So your cowbell bolts are going to drop in here at the bottom of this triple tree right here with these guys. And these are pretty simple. Just, just get them kind of finger tight. Drop that guy in. Grab your other one, that guy there. Get most of these in by finger. Make it easy. And then get a little ratchet on there. Screw it on. Good to go. Man, these are going to look way better than those stock ugly ones. Good. That one's on there. See it? It's gonna look good. That's right. Let's flip around to the other side. So it's, these guys are pretty much just reversing the process. You know, everything that you took off, just reverse the process to put them back on. So they're not that difficult. Sometimes when you're doing it on like a road king or something, the uh, headlight in the cell might get in the way a little bit and they kind of get in the way so you might need either a smaller bit to get to your pinch bolts for your fork legs or you end up taking all that all that stuff off so if you got sometimes these these cowbells will have who the hell is calling me now back to it sometimes with the cowbells they'll have weld seams in them make sure that they're on the back side otherwise they look ridiculous on the front you'll notice it or a buddy will point it out and you'll just feel like a dumbass so these these guys luckily they're solid all the way around it looks like they're one piece of cast something but uh you could you could hear them they're they're solid and they look good too and uh, there's a bunch of different manufacturers for these guys you know, it might even make it more simple is this. The power ratchet with an adapter. Yeah. Not fooling around. Hopefully this fits. I don't even know if it'll fit. Got it. Yeah, do that next time. Just get a little adapter with your bit on there. See, now they're on there nice and solid. Who the hell? Eh, spam. Just a quick side note real quick guys, what y'all think of my shirt? I mean some some random kid just came and knocked on my door on Father's Day and left this shirt for me. I don't know what the hell that's supposed to mean, but that's kind of cool, so I guess I'll wear it. Cool, so those are on. Now let's get those fork legs back in and get those pinch bolts tightened up. Remember, they got to go up as far as they were when they came out but you don't want to put them up as far to where they're touching the bottom of your handlebars because you just don't. Um, but they should just come up probably about an eighth, maybe a sixteenth of an inch above your triple trees. So these guys just slide right back up in here. You can kind of feel it there. I like to hold it with my knee. So just double check, triple check it. Every time you check it, this first side's always the easier one because you don't have to make it match anything. The other side, you do. Because watch, once I tighten this one, the other little guys will be loose. Now after you get these on, ride it for a little bit, and then when you come back, check them again to make sure that they're st still tight. They don't need to be wrenched and torqued on there like out of control because when once they're pretty snug these legs aren't going to go anywhere let's do the other side okay we're going to slide this bad boy right up in here 
All right, this is the fun part. Sometimes you might need a secondary person, sometimes you don't. To put that wheel on to line these wheels up. I'm gonna go ahead and let the lift, the lift down as much as I can. We'll roll that wheel up in there. Sometimes just the little center jack stands will do it. All right, just remember which side's which on. Now I should have bought some nice chrome spacers, but this one's ugly. Let's wipe it up. Cool, gotta at least make that somewhat presentable. So you can see those little grooves on there, these little lines right here. Those go towards the outside of the fork leg, not inside towards the bearing. So those how, that's how those go. I've seen them go both ways. It probably really doesn't matter that much, but if you ever pull them off a new bike, that's the way they're situated. All right. Let's lift that. that straight. Okay, that side's that. Now, here's the fun part of getting that ABS bearing in there. Not the bearing, stupid. The uh, the sensor. Tap that boy in there. All right, here's where we gotta look. Line that sucker up. Just like that, goes right in, nice and easy. Anyway, so here's the spacer, AB ABS uh, sensor on the other side, just goes one way. Um, that axle bolt should slide right in. Sometimes you gotta do some finagling, some wiggling um, to find that hole with your axle. If you guys know what that's about, you know, just finagle that axle into, into the hole or the, and then it goes through that long hole into the other hole on the other side, your greasy axle, right down through, see, I, I mean, greasy. So, axle in the fork leg, axle out the other side, get your washer, your big nut. Just kinda hand tighten it on this side for now because wrenching that down is not gonna do any good until you get this pinch bolt back in. That's good. Now that uh, that axle shouldn't, shouldn't move on the other side. You can see it's got that hole in it right here. Check your manual for your sport torque specs because every bike is different. All right, it's easy enough. All right, calipers, let's just cut this guy here. Cut that guy. Make sure you got your gap. Spread these two little things that kind of look like uh, lips, like some greasy lips. Um, you want to spread those as wide as you can and just kind of slide it on there. Just like that. Just kind of slide it on there. Get your star head bolts. These you want to make sure that they are not cross threaded in any way. Kind of wiggle it a little bit. You could, you should be able to get these pretty much the whole way, finger tight. And if they're not going, if you're going to have to put a wrench on them, it's not threaded right. So, um, make sure that you just do it finger tight. Because if you have to get a wrench on it, see that one, that one, maybe you have to come back out. Same deal, boys. Take off your zip ties that are holding it, securing it. Spread those brake pads that look like brake pads. These sickos. Okay, so these should go just like that in your wire. <laughs> you want to make sure you get your big old bolt in the hole. Slick. 
Okay, be careful putting your fender in so you don't scratch stuff. Okay, these bolts I also like to put them in basically finger tight as much as I can and then we will tighten it down with the, with the ratchet. So anyways, those aren't that hard to do guys. It's just gonna take probably a half hour, maybe an hour, depending if you have the right tools or not in your toolbox, you're definitely gonna want a lift or a jack of some sort to get the front end of the bike up off the ground. Otherwise that bike's just gonna fall over, you know, when you try and do it because it's got no wheel on the front end. So again, it's just pulling off that front wheel, the calipers, the fender, the fork leg is slide out and then you unbolt those those cowbells or the fork slider covers whatever you want to call them just depending on how you search for them when you're going to order them and then you just reverse the process to put them back on so if you like the video go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already give me a thumbs up if you got any questions comments concerns or even jokes throw them in the comments and we'll get you on the next video thanks guys